Okay, here we go, continuing on with our cell cycle unit. In this screencast, I'm going to talk a little bit about checkpoints within the cell cycle that regulate the progress of how cells progress through this um, and kind of keep them in check so they don't uh, basically divide out of control. If we look at this graphic, uh, once again, this is the cell cycle in its entirety. And you can kind of think of it as um, a, a knob on a dryer or on a washer, I should say. You know, it cycles through different parts of the washing cycle, okay? Um, whether it's G1, S, or G2, an interphase. And you move from one part of the cycle to the next, um, just as a, dry, as a washer does, and you move from G2 into interphase. Um, and, and these red kind of partitions are, are, are signifying different checkpoints within the cell cycle. We have a G1 checkpoint, we have a, a checkpoint at the end of G2, and we also have a checkpoint in mitosis that we need to talk about, all of which regulate how a cell progresses through the cell cycle. All right, so let's look at some of these regulations. The first, the G1 checkpoint, once again right here. G1 checkpoint, um, if, it's, if, it, if a cell is good to go, if, it, if it's um, prepared, if it has the sensors that it needs, um, it, it's going to move through G1. And typically, if a cell moves through G1, it's going to go ahead and progress through the cell cycle. G, the G1 checkpoint is a very crucial one. Okay, um, we talked in the last screencast about the G0 state and how many cells kind of hover in the G0 state waiting for some kind of signal to kick back into G1. So if that signal isn't there, whether that signal is um, your skin cell waiting for some kind of damage uh, or liver cells waiting for some kind of damage, if they're waiting for that signal that says, hey, uh, we, we've detected some damage, we need you to kick off into G1, they're going to be hanging out here in G0, kind of in a holding pattern. Um, but when, let's say, the platelets start to release a growth factor and the fibroblasts in your blood uh, start to detect it, then that's going to kick them. That growth factor is then going to move them from G0 through this G1 checkpoint and then it'll progress um, through interface. So that G1 checkpoint has to do with moving cells out of this holding pattern that is G0. The G2 checkpoint. The G2 checkpoint is right at the end of G2 just before a cell is going to progress into prophase um, and begin mitosis. It involves uh, proteins called kinases and, and specifically cyclin dependent kinases or CDKs for short. Okay? These kinases, recall you know kinases, these enzymes phosphorylate things. Okay? Um, they add a phosphate uh, to different things to progress some kind of process. And these are dependent, as their name states, on cyclin, another protein. The CDKs, their level stays constant within the cell. Okay, The level of CDK does not fluctuate, but the level of cyclin does. I'll say that one more time. CDK, the levels don't fluctuate, they stay constant, but the levels of cyclin fluctuate. CDK is inactive. Without cyclin, it's an inactive enzyme. But when it bonds with cyclin, it produces an MPF complex which is a maturation promoting factor. It's going to promote this cell to continue maturing through mitosis. Let's look at this. Here's the cell uh, cycle as it progresses. You can see levels of cyclin fluctuating as we go through. Okay, Let's look here. Levels of cyclin dropping during G1. And cyclin starts to begin to be produced at the end of S phase. That production of cyclin continues through G2. And as more cyclin is produced, more of it's, as, as we looked on here, more cyclin is produced, more of it's going to start associating with the CDK. Here's the CD, or, I'm sorry, this is the cyclin, this is the CDK. As more cyclin gets produced during S and during G2, more of it's going to associate with the CDK. 
And when these two associate, they make MPF. And when you have a bunch of MPF, you can move through this G2 checkpoint. So cyclins increasing. And look, this other looping um, line, this is MPF activity. So watch what happens. As cyclin increases, more of it's going to associate with CDK. More MPF is produced, so MPF activity rises. All right. Now, what does this MPF do? Well, what it does is it starts to phosphorylate the nuclear lamina. And the nuclear lamina, recall, is that network um, within the nuclear envelope. It's kind of an inner covering within the nuclear envelope. And it starts to phosphorylate that nuclear lamina and start breaking it down. And what do we need during prophase? What needs to happen in prophase for those centrioles? Recall the centrioles are, are shooting out the spindle fibers. Those spindle fibers need to be able to get to those chromosomes. How do they get there? Well, the MPF starts phosphorylating the nuclear lamina. The nuclear envelope starts breaking down as a result. And then those, uh, those spindle fibers can get in. They can attach at the kinetic core. And mitosis can occur. Okay, so that's how we get through the G2 phase. Once we get into mitosis in anaphase, the cyclin starts getting broken down, starts getting degraded. So what happens when CDK is not associated with cyclin? It becomes inactive again, and it gets recycled and used once again to get through the next G2 checkpoint. All right, so this CDK um, and the cyclins are, are what are going to get us through the G2 checkpoint and go to initiate the steps required for, for mitosis. It's another checkpoint. G1, G2. There's a metaphase checkpoint. Okay, going back. Here was our G1, here's our G2. Now we're at our metaphase checkpoint. In the metaphase checkpoint, recall, quick uh, terminology review. We have a duplicated chromosome here held together at the centromere. And on either edge of the centromere are these kinetic cores, these points of attachment for the kinetic core microtubules, for the kinetic core spindle fibers. Remember, if it's attached to a kinetic core, it's called a kinetic core spindle fiber. If it is not attached to a kinetic core, it's a non-kinetic core spindle fiber. So we have these kinetic cores, and within each kinetic core is a protein complex called an anaphase promotion complex. And that anaphase promotion complex is inactive until a microtubule, until a spindle fiber attaches to the kinetic core. When the spindle fiber attaches to the kinetic core, it activates this anaphase promotion complex, which is going to start activating motor proteins inside this kinetic core and begin the transition from metaphase to anaphase. And recall what happens when you're transitioning from metaphase to anaphase. These motor proteins inside here are going to start eating their way back. And these sister chromatids are going to be separated. Now, not until those kinetic core uh, spindle fibers are attached will this APC start working. So it can't enter anaphase until you have a, a, a spindle fiber here. And this is very, very important um, to prevent uh, genetic disorders, okay? to prevent non-disjunction disorders. You don't want both of these chromosomes going in one direction. If both of these go this way, the resulting cell on this side is going to have an extra chromosome, and the resulting cell that's going to be over on this side is going to be missing a chromosome. That's going to cause a genetic disorder, a non-disjunction disorder. Um, like Down syndrome or, or Turner's or um, Kleinfelter's disorder. All right, metaphase checkpoint. Other things that affect the progress of the cell cycle, growth factors. We talked about growth factors. Let's back up just a second. We talked about growth factors that bump cells out of G0 and through the G1 checkpoint. Growth, growth factors like PDGF, like platelet-derived growth factor. The platelets in the blood that are near a wound, that are proximal to a wound, will start releasing PDGF. 
Okay, here's a very simplified uh, way to represent this. But the PDGF of different types will be released into the bloodstream. Fibroblasts are going to start detecting those, those growth factors presence by these receptors that are on their plasma membranes. And when they fit into the receptor, these fibroblasts are going to kick out of G0 into G1. They're going to start dividing and they're going to start clotting and, and, and um, stopping the bleeding and, and begin the healing process. Density dependent inhibition is another factor that helps to control the cell cycle. Typically normal cells will divide up to a certain density. Okay, Whether they start feeling this is very anthropomorphized, but whether they start feeling uh, claustrophobic once they are realize that they have cells on all sides, um, the, all those sensors start start ticking, and, and they realize, okay, we are at a, a maximum capacity, at a, at a maximum carrying capacity. We need to stop here, or whether um, a level of nutrients is is just high enough to support this population. We're not really sure but they won't grow past a, a certain density. They'll stop and they'll kick into G0. Now there are some cells, abnormal cells, that won't um, follow these rules, that will just keep dividing. Uh, HeLa cells, Henrietta Lacks, you may have heard of her. She died in 1951, but they still have a line of her cells from a tumor that is still dividing. No matter the, de the density, these HeLa cells are still dividing, named after Henrietta La Lacks. Okay, so um, she's further genetics more than um, she could ever realize. Obviously, she was, she's not realizing much at this point. But some cells don't follow the rules, and we'll get back to that. Um, Anchorage dependence is the last factor we're going to talk about. I'm using the same graphic because, um, simply put, cells need to be anchored to a surface. Normal cells need to be anchored to a surface in order to divide. If they're floating, they won't divide. And once again, remember, these are normal cells that follow these rules. What if they don't? What if the cells don't follow the rules? That means it's a cancerous cell, okay? You've heard of um, metastasis. If a, if a tumor is metastasized, that means that cells are moving. And cancer cells, even if they aren't anchored, they can divide. Cancer cells can divide despite any density. They aren't inhibited by any um, uh, particular density. They don't follow these rules. They don't follow the checkpoints. They will just keep dividing and dividing, and, and you'll see tumor formation. So we'll talk more about cancer, but these checkpoints are uh, essential, or, or else we, we get situations like this.